This episode is brought to you by Hulu Plus. Watch your favorite shows anytime, anywhere with Hulu Plus. At home or on the go on your smartphone or tablet. Shows like South Park, Key and Peele, American Horror Story, and more. Try Hulu Plus free for two weeks when you go to huluplus.com slash patch. This show is sponsored by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy, delicious treats like dark cocoa almonds. Support this podcast by ordering a free NatureBox sampler box at naturebox.com slash the patch. Hi. Hey. Hello. You've just walked in on a discussion of burn creams. Burn creams. Look, burns on. <laughs> burns happen. Yeah. They do happen. That's true. And sometimes you just need a good cream. Uh, you know, a cream, a salve. You know what I got you. Maybe a potion. I got you. You, you need a cream? Yeah. <laughs> but I actually do. I have a great burn cream. <laughs> I burned my toy toys. Got a good burn cream. Well, welcome to the patch, yes. a special Thanksgiving edition. Except we're, you know, of course, recording it on Wednesday, like we always do, with Ashley, Meg, and Ryan, and we're here to talk about video games and such. And video game and I'm news. I'm throwing shit on the desk and flipping and, the thing, oh. and there. I like that it's over on your side now, so that it's like this is within Ryan's grasp at all times. It's so David Bowie esque. We should put a little paper David Bowie in it. All right. Does you that seem would, like Jennifer Conley should be stuck only, in that? Only if it's also got a bit of a stock stuffing. Stock oh. stuffing. <laughs> you can't have a David Bowie without a David Boney's pack. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days, kids. Saddle up. Mm. Yeah, well, no, unfortunately, I don't think he fit through a little spout, so he'd only be on one side of it. That's so fine. So some days he maybe would be buried like, in sand. Yeah, maybe it's like... Well, I guess he'd be upside down the other times. Some but days we'd be maybe it'd be him sweet to like reveal him as the sand comes out. He's got like a super dramatic. Hey! Play. I feel like I stumbled into the RT podcast somehow. <laughs> <laughs> what, you want to throw a video game in there? Has yeah. David Bowie ever been in a video David game? David Bowie's package, the video game. Nailed it. There it is. I'm, I'm calling it. It's on green light right now. I, I hope somebody does. <laughs> What's the game there? What isn't boing, the boing, game boing, there? Boing, boing. I mean, what is See if you it, can like, not look at it for 30 seconds while it's on screen. <laughs> What's the game with a shake weight? I mean... It's, it's an exercise device, mm-hmm. isn't it? It's an exercise game. I, uh, oh, I realized yeah. I forgot my show and tell item. You had a show and tell yes, item? Yes. You in came my, Well, it's in my chair. Oh, it's if great. If anybody... Oh, hey, girl. <laughs> sorry, audio podcast listeners. I promise to describe everything. It's a backpack. It's a, it's, a it's a little, backpack, it's a little okay. backpack. It's a backpack, but it's not just any backpack. It's a lost do you wanna, backpack. Do you want to pre-introduce this? Yes. So uh, Telltale Games, yes, that's it, was kind enough to send me Clementine's backpack Aww. from The Walking Dead. Um, they sent out a bunch of them. Thank you. It's a, a tiny person backpack. A week or so ago, and I was like, I kept one. I was sad. And they were like, oh, yours has been sitting in an apartment in Los Angeles. And I'm like, oh, I don't live there anymore. <laughs> so uh, it's Clementine's backpack from The Walking Dead. The best part is it's to promote that The Walking Dead is on Next Gen now, the first uh-huh. season and second season. But the best part, because you're just like, oh, sweet backpack. She has her, it has all the stuff Clem has in her backpack, Aww. like the drawing of Kenny, Katja, and Duck, and a little water bottle. <laughs> I, I, I want to know what intern had Was fun it, making these. Right? I like that it's, yeah, it's it all pre crushed and like, like no, 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 it's running out. It's distressed, it's an intentional That's true. Stash. It's aged. And then this just goes to show you that this will be here forever. Like yes. the right. aging process is just to crush it. It still looks totally normal. <laughs> it totally works. I'm start using this. This is my Clementine water bottle. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, and then a picture of Lee. Oh. oh, in the fields. It's like her ripped picture of Lee, and also the game. But come on, the yeah. ripped picture of Lee. That's the selling. Got point. We yeah. need to get a picture of um, of Esther with that backpack. I for, tweeted for her Halloween. <laughs> she, she dressed as Clementine, and she like the jacket was amazing. Uh-huh. She wore her cool jacket, and yeah. uh, Gus and I kept teasing her about it all night. So uh, I tweeted already when I got it. I was like, I got a backpack for you. <laughs> it's it's you can wear official. I'm cosplay gonna look like wear. a weirdo. Like you're gonna hey, look guys, like you have I a tiny a backpack. backpack. <laughs> I don't need to carry much, I swear. <laughs> I got my crushed water bottle. I'm ready to go. <laughs> there you go. Don't forget your crushed oh, water shit, bottle. That I did. can easily be confused for trash. Telltale's doing a lot of weird stuff lately. Mm-hmm. So they just out of the blue dropped Tales from the Borderlands. Just yep. like, oh hey, surprise, it's out today. Well, and hey. they also when they sent out review codes for Tales from the Borderlands, um, we got the review codes the night before the embargo lifted. Like, play the game. Talk about it now. <laughs> Ready, go. Well, and they also go. It's going to be out this day for uh, for this platform. This platform, uh, I think PS4 and PC. But then Xbox, like we don't know. It'll be there like at some point. 
And I guess, Meg, you were telling me that it's because they just have issues with Microsoft, like, not giving them the dates or whatever. Being yeah. Like, oh, it'll be up at some it point. It seems like, because I get review codes from Telltale, and it seems like every time I do, they're like, Steam's already up. Uh, PS4, here's the date you're going to be up. Xbox, waiting on waiting to hear back from Xbox. It, like, seems like Telltale always has a problem with Xbox. <laughs> it's a weird reason. thing, though. No, like, other developers don't have that problem. I guess, I think it's because Telltale works on, like, a, as soon as it's done, they want it out. Like, they don't mm-hmm. wait to be like, okay, it's done, so we're going to set a date now that we know it's going to be done. Like, they want it, like, I feel like the, I, I mean, I don't know, but I feel like the episode is finished, like, the week before it comes out. If that. Yeah, if that. I agree. Uh, I mean, I do like that they just go like, eh, day one's not a huge deal. It's nice to have a company yeah. not focus on day one for once, but it does make the messaging a little bit confusing. Like, oh, wait, it came out? Oh, uh, okay, wait, oh, but not on this platform? Okay, okay. It's still I get it. They, they're like, You'll buy it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the mark of a truly successful company is they're not worried about release dates. They're not worried about any sort of it. Like they have embargoes, but they're pretty flexible. Like they, they're just like, yeah, we make quality stuff and people buy it. So cool. They're like the chill friend at the party. It's like, yeah, man, cool player game. I got some good stuff. You want it? Yeah, yeah. come on, come get it. You're going to come back. It's cool. They uh, they did a thing with Game of, for Game of Thrones too. They, they keep saying it's going to be out before the end of the year. It's going to be out before the end of the year. Uh, yesterday on like November 25th or whatever, they're like, it's going to be out in December. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> of course it's going to be. Like, if it's coming out this year, if it's not coming out like tomorrow, of course it's coming out in December. Hey, you don't know. Maybe it's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> Ashley was so like, well, that's, that's so funny because she was like, they said it's coming out in December. That's just ridiculous. And I'm like, don't put it past Telltale. Don't put it on November 29th. Oh just screw with you. They heard about you specifically. <laughs> They're like, oh, she said what? <laughs> All right, release the game. Put that shit out. Put that shit out. Out, mm. out the door right now. I will. I will take all the credit for that. <laughs> if, it, if it comes out this month, you're I'll all take it. welcome. Uh, there's a lot of days like, left in the year. My, my work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so they did just launch that game. Has have either of you played it yet? I haven't gotten to play it yet. Yeah, it's a uh, movie length, though. I do know mm-hmm. that it plays around two fifteen to two thirty mm-hmm. for lengthwise, which is great. And I've heard only good things. Yeah, it's been spoken of very well. Uh, it's very pretty to look at. I haven't actually got to interact with it yet, but yeah. it seems like they treat their stuff a lot more like a comic book rather than a game. It's just, you know, a an interactive version of that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think so, The Walking Dead is a, a high. So all those people like ragging on How to Fool Boyfriend, guess what? Telltale's doing that shit, just not with pigeons. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. There's no dating <laughs> There's sense. no comparison between but it is, How to Fool But it is boyfriend. kind of an interactive graphic novel. No, 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 no. You, do no, you no, just no, say no. it's more like a comic? Like, see, Telltale games make you feel things <laughs> and have thoughts and emotions. I have this Barbie game that's just like a comic. <laughs> it's How to Feel Boyfriend thing. makes you want to shoot yourself in the head. Oh, no, don't say that to Ashley. Says the she guy who hasn't that. played it. I did play it. I did. We really? got the code. And I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, okay, well, I'll give it a shot. How long did you I'm, get it? I'm, I went through the entire thing. Who did wow. you romance? Okay, to let, be me fair, you pick out. let me just By say that end. you're shitting on something like a pigeon ting. Uh, <laughs> but you're shitting on something you played the whole thing. Let of. me clarify. This is awful. I hate this. I oh my god. Playing what, it. Do you think I should go for the shopkeeper? <laughs> Ten minutes in, I stopped reading it and just started clicking the next button. Oh uh, well, now you've, you. So you didn't really play. So it. you got no. ten minutes. You in. neutered it. I 10, 15 minutes in. Well, and that was the that was all I could take. Out. That was all I could take. Like, okay, I get it. Oh, I'm a bird. Oh, okay. someone wants okay, to I'm give you not a bird. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm into birds, I guess. I'm a lady that likes birds. You don't know that birds. you're a lady. Yeah, you become a lady. So is it is it ever specified that you're a lady? Or okay. are you just like a character and That's you assume fair. you're a lady? You're a genderless person. Uh, genderless that is lady. <laughs> a non-specified gender protagonist. Exactly. Uh, and you're into dude birds. But come on. And then some, suddenly you're like a ninja in the street fighting birds. Uh-huh. You're only uh-huh. selling me on this uh-huh. game at this point. Uh-huh. I, I, I forget. I'd see, I, I worked really hard to repress all memories of oh, this. I had sure. a lot of legitimate reasons why it was a terrible, terrible thing to do to human beings to make them play this game. I don't remember any of them now. Like yeah. I've purged it's all of it with convenient. good things. We're like learning Far a lot Cry. of convenient things. For like, a long time when I was playing it, I um like I had it and I'd like make a couple decisions and then I'd switch like I'd alt tab out and like go like do you know, work or whatever. Yes, I played it at work a little bit. Uh, and I accidentally, like, I left it on overnight. So I came back in and it's like, oh, you've got, you know, 26 hours played in Had a Full Boyfriend. <laughs> and now the Steam, right, the new Steam recommendation engine, all it gives me is, like, Japanese dating sense. <laughs> yes. So I can tell you a lot about those. And games about birds. It's really strange. Yes. Oh, uh, right, so, sp- speaking of Steam games, I didn't mean to hijack no, you there. Uh, speaking of Steam games, I played um, To the Moon and A Bird's Tale, I believe is the sequel. 
I want to say Bird Story might be it. Um, but I played them both over the weekend. One is a Steam game from 2010, and one just came out. Tell me about it. I've never heard of either of these games. What? To the Moon is great. Actually, I saw it because of a review for a Bird Story, and they referenced that To the Moon was the first game. Um, but it's a Steam game, and it's five bucks. And... To the Moon is like this kind of, it's really interesting. It's almost like people can go, when you're dying, you have a dying wish and you hire this company and they go into your memories and make your wish happen. And uh, you're one of the people who makes the wish happen. Like you're one of the scientists that goes in and helps make the wish happen. So you go through this guy's memories and experience hmm. his life and change small things to like steer him in the right direction. Um, it's really emotional. It was really, really, I, I really, really liked To the Moon. A bird story was one hour. It was super short. There's no dialogue. And it's a cute story, but I felt like it fell short. Because I, I guess because I played them back to back, I expected so much more of the second one. How is that a sequel then if it's... It's like a spiritual successor. <sighs> Ting! It's which a is a nice way of saying... Right. Which is a nice thing saying we use the same sound files and visual, like, visual look. Yeah. Visual look as opposed to, like, <laughs> just, you know, an audio look. Well, you know, those, those Braille games are really <laughs> hot with the kids these days. There was a there was a PayPal email that went out to a bunch of people uh, basically telling them to get their Steam wallet, like to buy, use PayPal to like buy Steam wallet codes because theoretically the Steam sale is starting today. Oh, nice. Well, yeah, so, I checked so right because, before we came because on because and nothing because was... Because we're pre-recorded, mm -hmm. I don't think it will yet. I, if I recall correctly, it starts, it's Pacific time mm -hmm. and it starts at like... A, like sometime between like 11 or 1 usually that's when it started last mm -hmm. time and then it just like kicks off and they just go oh look at sale yeah so if it's steam sale get to the moon for sure to the moon to yeah the moon on I, the steam well sale. if it's already five that may not even go down <laughs> well that much, but. apparently a bunch of people got it when it was on the last steam sale okay so hopefully it's also on sale this time it's always great to sales. dig out those little nuggets of, of past gaming whenever yeah. the sales, sales come around. I still have 11th Hour and 7th Guest from <laughs> like three Steam sales ago that I... I've got like 15 Steam games from the last yeah, sale that I haven't play. played. Mm -hmm. I get like during the sale, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great. This is going to like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be all my time is going to be PC gaming. And then I'm like, oh, that's right. I just... I work. <laughs> yep. I just work. That's funny because I'm playing a game right now. No, just <laughs> that's my new. Well, you got a new PC. It's true. I did, and I. Uh, that's my new idea or my new scheme is to just bring this everywhere and look like I'm working and to be. I'm just gonna play the the Resident Evil typing game. Just so I look like I. She is game. working so hard. There's really a Resident Evil <laughs> typing game. Is it the typing of the dead? Typing of the dead. Okay, I was like, oh, I was no. like, wait, is oh, there an official? The I'm sorry. Well, is there no, an official? Typing of the dead is the. Is yeah, the there Resident Evil of the dead? Typing of the dead I'm is sure a typing official. version of House of the Dead. Of House like. of the Dead, okay. right? That makes more sense. Yeah. Believe me, I'm familiar with that game. Is there also a Resident Evil typing game? I was getting really excited to think there might be an official Resident Evil one. There is. You just write your own fanfic. Oh, there's not a Resident Evil typing game. Somebody get on that. Steam sale starts. Get your typing game on. But yes, there. You're gonna have limited. You're gonna have severely limited letters. <laughs> Was it like Twitter now? It's only gonna get 140 characters. Or? And the game has ended. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you died. That, that should be a new thing, right? Like Game Jam. Can you write a game in 140 characters? There was a. There are some really cool ones that that have been done uh, that are like basically procedural game jams, mm -hmm. saying that you have to write it and it has to be you know below this many kilobytes. But it has to be a full game. So well, it has to basically procedurally generate everything in the game in order to get that small. It's really cool. The coolest thing I think in the last five years in indie gaming is like gaming jams, making uh -huh. games that not are just, oh, this is really impressive for having 48 hours to work on it. They become full-fledged actual oh. games. I absolutely adore that. There the, we go, procedural generation jam. Procedural yeah! generation jam. It was actually, uh, it looks like there was one... Uh, earlier this month. It, it seems was on like November could, 8th. <laughs> I feel like you could call, like, I just want to, could you hand me the procedural, what was it, sorry? Procedural, procedural generation, generation jam. There you go. I'm running I think on so people just sleep. call it proc jam. So is it, I mean, is it like retro? Do you have to like, oh, it's got to fit on a three and a half inch floppy. Um, that would be awesome. Does someone still have a drive <laughs> My for zip that? drive. How many three and a half inch floppy drives do you think are in this building right now? Any? Would you bet on one? No, we have at least one in the house, but I'm not sure we've got any in the building. Uh -huh. I would say one. I you bet Adam's one got one somewhere buried somewhere. In here. I bet he does. You're yeah. probably right. Somewhere in a closet. Um, the Ludum, I'm going to say Ludum Dara, because that's what I've heard it is, but it might be Ludum something else. I, there's five different ways to say it. No matter how I say it, I'm always wrong. But that is, I always follow that when it comes up, and they have the coolest, coolest games come out of that. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love game jams like that. Like, And they always have different themes, and the community votes on themes. and 
so fun. Game jams have been a great way for new, well, at least stuff that I've seen from uh, Oculus development that's been really cool. A lot of it has come out of game jams just because there's not a lot of people are doing it mainstream because yeah, there's no product for it yet. Uh, but things like uh, Keep Talking, You'll Explode, which is one of the, a lot of people have seen that game where it's the one person has documents and the other person is in the Oculus looking at a bomb and you have to defuse the bomb by communicating back and forth. Like the documents are all really arcane, like old translated Russian kind of stuff. Like if squiggly line cut wire. Uh, ah. And the person in the game's like with the timer counting down. So like, it's like Space Team the Oculus That's exactly game. what I was thinking. Kind of, yeah. Uh, and then there was another one that we uh, I'm gonna tease up Play Pals for tomorrow but we, what, that we did, which was Black Hat Oculus, where one person is like a hacker outside the game. Uh, they have a top-down map and can see things like traps and all the, the dangers in the world. And the other person's just walking around in this 3D environment. And they can't see any of the traps, so mm -hmm. they have to completely rely on the other person to, uh, to walk them through what's going on. I love that. Asymmetrical games are a lot of fun. They are. They really are. I mean, would, you, would you call that asymmetrical? Yeah, I would. Yeah, absolutely. I, I guess we're, yeah. I'm used to thinking of people like on different teams having mm -hmm. like different stuff like, you know, Evolve or right. Fable Legends or something is that is asymmetrical. But I guess if you have two people on the same team working together, but they're equipped completely differently, that would also be asymmetrical. Asymmetrical co-op? Yeah, it's yeah, completely different. Uh, it's kind of like the uh, Modern Warfare had the in Modern Warfare 2. There were the spec op game types where one person would be doing one thing completely different than the other. Just a, a it's totally different experience for one player versus the other player. Yeah, it's cool. I like mm -hmm. it. Um, so for this procedural game jam, the one that um, this procedural generation jam at 2014, uh, that's actually not one of the limited size ones. I think I'm thinking of something that was all, that's happened several several years ago. Limited uh -huh. size, yeah. That, that, yeah, to that keep it under. Size. So I'm not seeing size limits for for proc jam. Hashtag proc jam. I love that they're like <laughs> proc jam's now limitless. Like I want to believe they made it. Like, well, yeah. actually, the optional theme for this year was infinity. So there is that. That's exciting. It's really cool. I'm trying to pull up a list of all the games that started in, in the Ludum Dara and, and became actual games. There's one that's coming out for PS4, and it looks like it's like a Zelda type game. I, I can rem if I remember it, I'll, I'll shout it out. Mm -hmm. I like game jams because they're almost like a very distilled idea. Yeah, you don't have a lot of time to build out, so you just have very like a core, mm -hmm. and then afterwards, if the core works, you can build it out and make it something more elaborate. But in the meantime, like you can tell if a game is like if you're on the right track just from those little prototypes that take, what, like 24 hours, 48 hours to make. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, so many games come down to just can you make the central hook, whatever that is, work. Yeah. And that's those game jams are just distilling the game down to what will hook you into playing this game for the rest of the day. I would love to see someone like Phil Fish do a mm -hmm. game jam just because it would absolutely challenge the way they work, right? Reality TV gold <laughs> so, so, you know, someone like Phil Fish like he, he he put out Fez and it was you know it was it was very well received and it was a beautiful beautiful game uh, but it took a very very long time for him to get there and I'd be mm -hmm. interested in seeing where he starts from mm -hmm. and how he could streamline to get down to like a 24 hour prototype you know maybe assuming he hadn't quit the industry <laughs> yeah well twice um, times. <laughs> the game is called Titan Souls was the original title for the game and it'll be released on PS4 and it started out as a game jam game. I like that we've all got our screens up and we're like, oh, just let me look Titan Souls. Souls. <laughs> it's described as the shadow of the, a Shadow of the Colossus meets Dark Souls meets The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And now being published by Devolver Digital. Yeah. Huh? That's a lot of people meeting. Oh, yeah. But it's really, really cool. It's, I also they remember being support really group. frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone come together. Hello. <laughs> like, let's all, let's talk about our feelings. Let's bond a little bit. That's I am. Um, maybe I, establish a safe word. That sounds like oh, a wow. mugging in a dark <laughs> wow. room. It just went wrong. It became a mugging that became an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> a safe word thing. Well, it depends on where you're going with things. Where are they wearing going masks? Mugging, <laughs> going orgy. I think both, the, the, that doesn't help us clarify it at all. I think both muggings and orgies have ways. masks. It's true. Um, <laughs> one of them, I think, we were talking about, like, distilling it down to something simple that works. One of my favorite things is uh, when I went to IndieCade, seeing how off the wall people get with concepts and how they actually totally work. There was this um, game there a couple years ago where you put on a helmet, it's like a construction hard hat, and it has a big button on top with a camera. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm too tall for the shot. You're being a um, bunny too. So you have like this thing right here and it straps on and you're in a circle 
And the goal is to hit the other person's button on top of their helmet, and you don't want your button to get hit. So you're like leaning your head away. But when you hit the button, it takes a picture of your face that everybody gets to see. <laughs> so like, it's just like, ah! Like a lot of that. It was so much fun and so cool. And I just love that that's a concept. So what if we were both wearing helmets that had but they buttons on them? What if we were giant buttons? buttons? <laughs> Wouldn't you that. slap it? Wouldn't okay. you? <laughs> That should be the name, like the the theme of that game, Wouldn't like the little subtitle. <laughs> Wouldn't you slap it? <laughs> I love that. It's coming soon to an arcade near you. Yeah. Giant Buttonhead. Yes, Giant Buttonhead. We'll take a picture. You slap your friends. <laughs> Wouldn't you slap it? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to slap it too? <laughs> I'm going to take a moment here to read in a sponsored ad. Run uh, your radio voice, Ryan. Yeah. Do you want me to do that? Okay. Right, radio <coughs> we need this. <coughs> domain names, domain names, no. domain, domain names. names yeah. <laughs> right now, Hulu Plus has all the current season episodes of your favorite shows like How to Get Away with Murder, Once Upon a Time, and South... Yep, I said that right. And South Park. And Hulu Plus has all the past season episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, American Horror Story, Key and Peele, and Parks and Recreation. Hulu Plus works on your computers, Smart TV, Roku, Apple TV, Xbox, Wii, PlayStation. That list keeps getting longer. You gotta take a breath. Well, talk someone into stopping the platforms, man. <sighs> Spread of technology. Uh, pretty much any streaming device you already own. With Hulu Plus, you're in total control to stream as much as you want, whenever you want. Brit binge watch all the shows you're behind on and discover a new one. For only $7.99 a month, watch your favorite shows anytime, anywhere. But for a limited time, Hulu is offering our viewers a whole month free when you go to HuluPlus.com slash patch. Make sure you sign up between November 20th and 30th of this year to get the extended one month free trial when you go to huluplus.com slash patch. Don't worry if you miss the deadline, Hulu Plus will still offer our viewers a two week free trial as long as you go through our special link, huluplus.com slash patch. Don't miss out on the special one month free offer. It helps support us, keep making great videos and podcasts, and get you a better deal. Speaking of expanding yeah, platforms. And better deals. And better deals. Black Friday is coming. It is. Smooth, smooth. Nice, Thank you. yeah. Um, there are like they've got a whole bunch of like a whole bunch of the for our international friends who live under rocks. Black Friday is um, it's pretty much America's so, national sport. United States rocks. Everybody, else. no, no. I just <laughs> mean that even inter kangaroos. even international people generally know about Black Friday. So uh -huh. these have to be very special international people. Who just brace all yourself for all yeah. the like. Rocks. We're supposed to know about American shit, Ashley. <laughs> exactly. That's why American I'm explaining shit? it. That's why I'm explaining it. Yeah, for the rest of the world, it's the day that shit gets cheap. Yeah, get yeah. stabbed and get cheap. Exactly. There's a lot of stabbing too, and uh, so all the retailers are announcing what they're going to be selling super cheap. It's awesome. They're doing Xbox Ones for basically 330 bucks, like the AC Unity bundle. Mm -hmm. They're doing PS4s for, oh, I've got a whole bunch of these written down here. Um, let me find them. Uh, I think EA is also doing a big thing. I remember seeing yeah. that. Yeah. Got the 75% off on 300 games is what the joystick article saying. <laughs> yeah. Good luck trying to be Steam Origin. <laughs> Trust me. We go up to 90% when the sale hits, which I still hope is today. I keep checking Some Steam. Some point today, oh, yeah. Come on. Well, you got to be the first to buy the deal. They, they go away. You don't want to get trampled in the e-store rush. <laughs> right. You got to stab some people. That's um, digital shanks. It's a real danger. Seriously. We digital need to shanks. Do, do like a... You should be able to like... I don't know how the engine would work, but you should be able to like digitally shank someone and steal their deal. <laughs> like they got it for 90% off. And if like 10 people vote to shank them, they get stolen. From you, get to, you get to put something in your shopping cart. Then you have to play a mini game where you get to the register. There was a game like that. What was it called? Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna ref oh, this isn't live. Shit. Uh, it's a you you had a ninja and you would put in your email address and you would send your ninja to kill someone and they would get an email. This was like five or six years or more I than that. I have no idea what you're talking Maybe about, like but eight I'm years very ago. intrigued. And you would get an email that's like, Ryan, Meg sent you a ninja. Was your ninja successful her ninja successful in killing you? Find out. And you click a link and it was cutscenes from Shogun Total War. <laughs> and it would and either it was the ninja succeeding or uh -huh. being killed. And then if you killed my ninja, it'd be like your ninja your ninja has one successful kill. Like your ninja level it, up? Yeah, send it to someone else. And the more kills you got, like the more powerful your ninja was. It was Awesome. Somebody, when no, this goes just live, to be clear, so it's like a different no kind real of ninjas assassins? are showing up. No real ninjas. Oh, man, I'm well, going to find out what that's called. That out of it, yeah. 
Okay, so there's ninja games. Well, I mean, Steam has been kind of working that way in the sense that there's the cards. I mean, there's now rewards around <laughs> sales. Yeah. I the, can see them working in some kind of other meta game there. The, um, you know, the, the last sale they had, the summer sale, and uh, they had you, you automatically get put on Team Red or right. Team Purple or Team Blue, and uh, whoever had gets the most collectible cards out of this day then they all get a thing or like f no 50 Something random from people from that team get a thing from your wish, li wish list yes yeah. mm -hmm. so it's oh, like wow. this weird super weird metagame but my whole thing was like i want to like collect these cards and stuff and it was like you know when you get to steam level five or whatever mm -hmm. then you can start then you start collecting these cards for every so much you purchase. And I was like i don't know how to get steam levels up like i bought games and i played games but i like i don't know I fully went and looked up guides on how like how to raise my Steam level, and I went and bought Steam like wallet credit, and I'm like start buying the collectible cards and like forging them into other badges. And I was like, I'm doing this. I think I got my Steam level up to level like 13 or something before. I was like, what am I doing with my life? You started gaming the Steam wallet game. Apparently, I mean, that's what you do. Like that system is there no, no, specifically no. so that you game it, right? That's what you do. It is what I did. The rest of us just bought some things on sale, and if our team won, then yay. But now I'm in a great position, so this time around, I can, I can forge some motherfucking badges. You're leveraging last year's success, or last sale's success, to this sale. Right, so now I can positively contribute to a team instead of just spending money on games. I just love that you have a, a positive view of that, because I remember Reddit tried that for an April Fool's joke. They made everybody either Team Periwinkle or Team Orange Red, and, oh, right. uh, and Reddit, like, revolted. They were like, you will not segregate me into a team, but Ash is like, yay, my Steam team! <laughs> <laughs> this should sell Steam Team jerseys, uh -huh. right? You would buy I'd one. Have a well, they, it changed every day, didn't it? Like, you would, oh. they would move, change colors, and there'd be different teams, or there you know, was I like think, a cycle. I think it was like, when you bought your first mm -hmm. Steam sale game, it automatically put you on a team. Okay. And then, and but then, so if you're on Team Red, and Team Red generated the most bad, or forged the most badges, I don't remember, uh, this day, that then Team Red wins this day, and 50 people, 50 random people who were on Team Red randomly get a game from their wish list. <laughs> See, it's, I, it's this super complex, convoluted thing. I was looking it up because I was writing a story on it going, I don't understand any of this, <laughs> but I will keep raising my Steam level. Absolutely. <laughs> I Yes. I love that. I, I think I just like being on a team. Like, I feel like I would I would buy, I made fun of you, but I would totally buy a Steam team I, color jersey. I like this. Yay, Steam Red. I like being automatically assigned to a team because it means no one gets to pick me last. Oh. Oh. Well, I, I always end up on the team that is dead last. I mean, <laughs> the automatically assigned, yeah, like, oh, oh, all right, well, I guess I fit in here. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, is like, you can't, it's like, you can't coordinate with people, not to mention the fact that this is the time of, those sales are the time of year when Steam has 8 million people on online mm -hmm. so you can get a couple of your buddies together and go let's all be on the same team and buy all these games and guess what's dropping the bucket <laughs> it's it's a completely randomized game that's not really effective anyway but don't tear down the game the other thing is it's going to be one of those things that ends up with uh it's just like destiny multiplayer where you will be the one that has contributed the most on your team like you will have been killing it you're number one you got uh, nothing the last guy he was like, who didn't even show, like, he just got stuck on the team because he spent a cent on buying a card boyfriend. on half full boyfriend, <laughs> which was too much for that game. <laughs> and he's going to get four and you're going to get nothing. That's the beauty of random. That was a life, Ryan. That is and life. And I think that's what Destiny was trying to teach us. So we're all hyped up for the sale now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of Destiny, while we're mentioning oh. it, there's Destiny stuff coming. Yeah, new DLC. I feel bad I forgot to talk about other Black Friday deals, but we'll oh, come back up? to it. Oh, uh, PS4, the big deal is mm -hmm. they're doing PS4 with GTA V and uh, Last of Us Remastered for $399. Uh -huh. Well, $400. Um, and that's at a, like, no, a whole no, bunch no. of different places. That's $399 like, is way better than $499. It's even $399.99, but that one penny... <laughs> That's you what you say. You can buy a Hattable, Hattable Boyfriend with that many. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what keeps you saying it's $300. It's not $400, it's $300. And right, it's like you didn't, you didn't spend $400 on no. a thing. No. I actually did budget. Well, after taxes, after taxes. But, you know, everybody knows taxes suck, right? It's I did taxes. that recently in a story. It was about people scamming a PS4. And it's a PS4 is $399.99. But in my head, I was like, it's $300. So I was like, they scammed $200. <laughs> and I read the whole story and I was like, 
that doesn't make sense. They've spent $90 and it's normally $399. They scammed $300. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. They've been bamboozled. So, yeah, those people figured out that uh, it was Walmart, right? That yes. it was doing a price match on any sale that you could find They do online. all the time. It's mm -hmm. not like a new thing. Like they always price match competitors. Uh -huh. And what people were doing was they were going on Amazon and creating their own storefront, which anybody can do apparently. And then offering a PS4 or an Xbox for sale for what a hundred bucks? It was a PS4 for eighty nine ninety nine. Wow. Yeah, and uh, which is basically eighty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> keep, let's keep routing that. <laughs> um, and taking it to Walmart, and people got them to honor the deal. It was inspired by the <laughs> spiritual successor to <laughs> another actual oopsie, where Sears mistakenly listed their Wii U and um, a 3DS for fifty nine ninety nine, and Ooh. told their employees, um, oh. Shit, sorry, we fixed it. Don't honor the deal. But people printed it out, and then when they weren't able to pick it up in Sears, they took it to Walmart, and Walmart did honor it. Wow. So then a couple days later, smart, people were right? like, oh, I mean, it's, Walmart, it's shitty, Walmart, but it's smart. smart. It's yep. clever. Uh, that's the danger it's of the... having one of those price match deals. Well, now it'll change for everybody. So people who use it to actually <laughs> save money, yeah. on, like, legitimately think, save money. I think Walmart already shut that down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, immediately. So I think they now do um, local only. Like, oh, so, so you gotta so have like not a, online a printed flyer necessary. or something. Yeah. All right, so the next big hack will be people will have a contract a print shop and then have them print out a very official looking flyer and take that into Walmart. Yeah, the thing that people say is like, well, Walmart should have checked to see if it was legit. And it's like, it's your everyday cashier is not gonna pull out their phone and like go through. They don't care. They're not seeing the bottom line get hurt. Like it's. They don't I care. Don't know. And honestly, could they really have time to do it? Mm. I mean, you're in the middle of checking out everybody. Like, oh, wait a minute. This is fishy. Let you guys wait. I got to do some research. Yeah. Right. Well, you, there's all the people behind you like tapping the feet. I'm yeah. a foot tapper. Are you? I'm like, I'm like, just go. Just go. I just start it's pushing on the hard. candy just rack. Go. I just like start flipping <laughs> things over. Like, oh, oh, you're going to make me wait? All right. There's your Snickers. <laughs> oh, don't make me go for the Tic Tacs. <laughs> They'll I, uh, be everywhere. I'm not a foot tapper, but if somebody has more than the, like, the maximum allowed items in like an express lane... Ooh, I'm gonna think about. I'm not gonna say anything, but I'm gonna think about it do you all do that day. Thing think, think about it very loudly. <laughs> you're doing an obvious like visual count yep. of everything. Yes, and I like, do. I'm and looking then I, at I'll all of these. Sometimes take a photo and passive aggressively tweet about you it. Look at them. Oh wow, look at that's the so much more than ten. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, and the big deal for Wii U, uh -huh. which I know Ryan cares a lot about, uh, is that they're doing it with. Um, a 32 gigabyte Wii U with Super Mario 3D World, Nintendo Land, Super Smash Brothers, and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze for 360 at Best Buy. Smash Bros. is doing really well. Didn't they sell yes. 470,000 was the last number I heard? I feel a little bit bad about that because I go, mm -hmm. well, that's not a lot of copies. But, I mean, I guess in comparison to Nintendo's install base percentage, it is. Yeah, Wii U's well, are not that prevalent yet, are they? Really? I mean, they've got... A I mean, I'm pretty sure that... Not a, it's not really a yet, but it's just they aren't. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not like they just came out, but... I don't think it's going to be a case of them, like, catching up, per se. No. Well, and that's the thing they is... they were out for a year longer than the other consoles. They're still really looking for that, that title that sucks everybody over onto the Wii U. I mean, they, yeah. you can do it. Well, that's the thing, is that you can get Super Smash Bros. if you want to play it. You can play it on your 3DS, and you can mm -hmm. play it there first. So, I, I do think a lot of people want to play on the Wii as opposed to the 3DS, but... Um, that actually sold for them better in Japan because the Japanese lifestyle is more suited to mobile gaming. So, mm -hmm. you know, handheld gaming is much more prevalent there. How long before you think yeah. Nintendo just walks away from the actual console market altogether and just goes straight handheld? I mean, it's for it them a dying happen. part of their business. It could happen. It is, although they're one of the few companies that doesn't tend to undercut themselves too much on the hardware. Mm -hmm. So, as long as their attach rate is high enough, I think they could be okay. They don't seem to work the way a lot of other companies mm -hmm. work, where they're like, well, you know, here's this profit sharing and this much and this much, and let's see what we can do here. They're just like, yeah, we're like, they, they don't con seem to consider themselves a competitor to PlayStation and Xbox. You're right. Yeah, it's very odd because they, they've they never really been, like they've yeah. never been proactive about getting things into, I mean, they were so far behind in terms of getting an HD console out. Uh, and we're just committed to the the look and feel that they already had and not really interested in changing it to match the other guys. Yeah, I think they much more consider themselves like a toy uh -huh. as opposed to super advanced electronics, which, you know, I mean, they just put the Amiibos out. Oh, my God, they're so cute. <laughs> I love them. And also, did you see the article about them? I mean, Amiibo taking like third in a 
tournament, a Smash Brothers tournament. <laughs> and people all by itself? Yeah. And actually, when we yeah. did the live stream here, the game night, Miles is a, a Kirby Amiibo. It kept winning matches. So yeah, they just kept saying butt. who was getting second was the winner of the match. <clears throat> so this little Fox Amiibo got third in like this big Smash Brothers tournament. I love it. I never got into Skylanders. I haven't got into Disney Infinity, although they have Big Hero 6 stuff now. <laughs> oh my God, Big Hero 6 is so cute. Uh, the, I was te- like, I was tempted. And then I saw the Amiibos and I was like, oh my God. Right in the childhood. Yeah. Oh, I'll all my nostalgias like are that. just like running. For, like I was like, I don't know what games I'd use them with. I just want to buy all of them anyway. It doesn't even matter. I don't care. I'll just put them on a shelf. It's gonna be great. See, I want them, but when they do a toad, they still don't have a toad. And they said Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is gonna support Amiibos sometime in 2015. So give me that toad. I, I like it. that they've all but announced it. They're like, it's Damn. this game that's all about Captain Toad is gonna support Amiibo. We haven't announced like a <laughs> Captain Toad Amiibo or anything, but this. Captain Toad game is going to uh, sometime next year. I don't know. It's not an announcement. But then they <laughs> also have review <laughs> copies already out. So it's like, when is the game going to release? And um, the game releases I guess in December. Later, I think. Yeah. I mean, and again, Nintendo is like very like Telltale in the in the day one. It's not a thing for them. Yeah. It's not. It's not the priority. They do where a Play lot of consoles game. do. Yeah. They're like day one is the day, and if it's not like if you have you know day one issues, uh, that's it. Versus they're they're like, no, nah, we'll consider dropping price in like five years. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo stuff holds its, well, holds its sale price. I don't know if it holds its value or not, but it the, everything they sell keeps that high ticket value for a long time past its release. Well, I mean, think about there are things that like the Super Nintendo came out how many years ago? And my Super Nintendo still works. And the Famicom I have still works, and the European Super Nintendo we have still works. But like an original Xbox, what are the chances that thing's still going to work? Well, I mean, you've already killed. You already killed an Xbox One, haven't you? We've killed. We're almost on Gavin two didn't. now. Yeah, we've. Yeah. it's almost two down at this point. So. But he's toxic for technology. Well, but then mine just started this magenta flashy thing, and it ha- I've power cycled it, and it just if I leave it on for too long, it's magenta cycle. Like, it, it flashes a magenta screen and everything freezes on Netflix. And then it's like, just kidding, everything's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I killed two Xbox 360s in one day. Wow. Two, they were, it was too long. It was like, Ashley's also got the Gavin free thing where she can touch things and I then do. they die. Everything, <laughs> whenever I take camera equipment on a trip, it breaks. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just broke our T3i. I didn't do anything to it. It just, it worked. We filmed something didn't and then you? we took it to, we were, we took it to interview <laughs> Bonnie Ross. Uh-huh. And, like, we tested it in that, like, it was Gus and I, we went to the Master 2 collection and we filmed all this stuff. Like, we, we shot an intro for our hands-on with Halo 5, uh-huh. like, and then immediately packed up the camera, took it to the event, got it out to interview Bonnie. It was dead. It was completely dead. See, I love that. She, uh, like, nervously was like, I think I, I, think I kill things. <laughs> oh my God. I like I was this like, idea wrong? now of Ashley showing up to anything where she has to have a camera and has, like, seven cameras now on you. <laughs> Nothing will Just fail to make sure me. there's one that I works. I need to take spares. <laughs> Something is really terrible. You're going to start looking like that, that prototypical journalist from all the movies where they had, like, that vest just festooned with camera equipment. <laughs> the, the Xbox 360 was not my fault, though. That was all Oblivion. Right. Tell us about it. It was Oblivion. That's it really was all it is. I played Oblivion. You There's played a little Game tombstone that says to a, a Oblivion. Console and the console died, and it was the console's fault. Are you are you acquainted with the fact that Oblivion killed consoles? Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> Fallout <laughs> killed mine. Fallout wow. 3. I wish we'd just been able to turn on all the lights and have a spotlight on your face. <laughs> Boom. Are you familiar with the fact <laughs> that on June 5th, 2007. What do you have to say for yourself, Ryan Haywood? I don't have to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you shut up! <laughs> wait, I thought we were both being good. We were doing good cut back up, but we're oh, both just wait, bad cut. Hold cop. on. <laughs> we're the worst. Look, let's. I'm sure we can figure something out. You can. Yeah, right. yeah. I just want to. I just want to make to pull um, Speaking of Bonnie Ross, she issued an apology this past week for oh. um, Halo. This past weekend for Halo. Uh, sorry, it doesn't work. And it reminded me of the South Park episode where BP spills oil, and they're like, "We're sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry." But they promised this very mysterious. Well, they didn't do that. In the South Park, you oh, sure they did. Do. Yeah. You're right. I'm sorry. I just thought of the sweet part of it. Not anything <laughs> You know, he got real weird. <laughs> like, sorry. <It's> t- <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be make that a gift. Of that. <laughs> um, but they teased a mysterious. We're going to take care of you if you own the game, and we'll tell you how once we fix the game. Is that a threat or a compliment? <laughs> like, don't worry, we're gonna take care of you. No, I think like, it's like a oh, sexy like. Like oh, you've got you've got complaints. 
We'll take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I can't, read it as can't, so can't afford it. Can't afford any squeaky wheels. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually wonder if it's something to do with the beta. Oh, the Halo 5 beta. That would be nice. Yeah, it's. I, I keep trying to get in and play some of that. Like and, maybe uh, they'll launch the beta early, or maybe they'll extend the beta, or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, uh, and for just what people that purchased. Well, that's the only it's way to get it, right? You have to have the, the, the yes, Master Chief like Collection to play beta. Yeah, yeah, it's on the list now. You can already see it in the uh, the extras area. Right, because um, that's on December 29th. I hope it works better than Master yeah, Chief exactly. Collection. Yeah, exactly. They've got to be sweating. If that's their network backend as it is right now, then that's not looking good. I, yeah, it's weird that they haven't really come out and said more about what happened. Uh, it's very her, generic terms. Like, yeah, her statement vague. was super vague, but it was just like, we we tested it, we did, <laughs> we tried to find out what this issue is. It's not happening on our end. Mm. So we keep, the reason that, it seemed like the reason they keep pushing patches that don't work is because they think the patch is going to work and then people get it and they're like, son of a bitch. Okay, what is it? Oh, okay, let's try this. Mm -hmm. So they're not experiencing it on their end, so they're, they're having trouble fixing it. So it's something server side where they don't... If, I guess in the cloud is that what I don't know if it's reliant on the cloud-based server structure of uh, throw some more buzzwords go, go. smoke bomb uh, cloud uh, uh, social influencer Nat redirection <laughs> sure what were we just talking about Nat we were talking about Nat a, yeah a day a or two ago, ago. <laughs> how stupid it is that it still exists yeah Bernie hates Nat he thinks he just doesn't know how we're we're this like. We're this far into technology, and Nat is a thing. Bertie is super hateful on Nat. Oh and it's God. not undeserved, because Nat is a terrible, terrible thing. It is. But, I mean, I feel bad. L remember last year, Battlefield 4 came out, didn't work, and it was the, it was kind of the one game that everyone sort of focused on as the game that doesn't work. This year, there isn't that. I know, I bet everyone... This year, it's like, <laughs> guess what? Dragon Age Inquisition mostly works. <laughs> Do you think they all got together and like, okay, guys, we all have games coming out in November. Does yours work? No? Yeah? No? I won't. All right, we'll be fine. It'll yeah. just spread it around. I want to believe that they were in a room. It's like, hey, my game works? No. Yeah, no, my game works too. And then finally someone was like, my game doesn't work. I can't do it. God. And then they were like, mine doesn't either. And they're like, yeah, let's just push them out. They all Delays? Hugged it out. No way. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, no, no. All, we got to come out. It's there Christmas. There was a weekend right? drinking, maybe some other stuff. They all hugged maybe it some out. Masks. People have got to have games that they can own but not play exactly. for Christmas, right? That's what every kid wants at Christmas to have a box of a game they can't play. <laughs> Well, if we release them in, in November, they'll have lots of time for it to be broken, and it'll be working when they get it in Christmas. I will say it's giving me a lot of time to play other games. It is, it's balancing my, my two, two game load out <laughs> a lot. So I'm, I'm like, I can still play Sunset Overdrive. That's fantastic. In fact, they just gave me like new weapons and stuff. So yeah. that's really yeah. cool. Uh, and they, yeah, they just like messaged me a code on Xbox One going, hey, here's some stuff. Nice. Yeah, because there's nice. a new like DLC thing coming mm -hmm. out. So New guns and whatnot. A little taste of yeah. it. I have um, all but one achievement in that. The, just need the last what's, what's Chaos your Squad. Last achievement? The last Chaos Squad. You have to beat each of the Chaos Squads at a certain level of chaos, which just means more difficulty. And I just need to beat the last one. That's it. What I've been kind of. So why haven't you gone on that, Ryan? Well, I've been waiting for everybody else to kind of get up to that point, and then I think I may have missed the window because now everyone has started oh, playing other, other things. So maybe with the DLC, they'll be back to it. Yeah. Uh, that and um, the other game is Dragon Age. Mm -hmm. Have you played that at all? Not yet. I got to play the co-op. I haven't played the the game yet. But hold on, just a second. I'm gonna read this, and okay. then we'll talk about Dragon Age. Let's I, do it. I want to. Have you played it? Yes. Okay. Good. I want to hear. All right. Two words, people. Two words. Free snacks. Ooh. Yes, Ooh. I'm going to give you the chance to get free snacks. Drop the candy bar. Drop the potato chips. They're not good for you. Do what I do. Get delicious, wholesome snacks at NatureBox.com. NatureBox gives me hundreds of snacks, I mean delicious snacks, and I don't feel guilty about eating them because they're better for me. They've got zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners, zero grams of trans fats, and no high fructose corn syrup. You'll even find snacks with no added sugar and without gluten ingredients. You're welcome, John. So in the afternoon, slump when I'm hungry and irritable, here's what I do. I grab <laughs> peanut butter nom noms from NatureBox or baked sweet potato fries or dark coca almonds. Personalized to your favorites. I think they just like making names so that you will say them more. Like nom nom. Nom 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 nom. <laughs> so good. And so much better for you than other snack options out there. And now I want to give you the chance to buy Nature Box for free. With a trial box featuring five of their most popular snacks. You heard me. Free. Free? Snacks. Free. Snacks. <laughs> to start your free trial, go to naturebox.com slash thepatch. 
Stay full, stay strong, do what I do, and start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox, naturebox.com slash the patch to get a free trial box of delicious snacks. Thanks, I'm, Ryan. I really want to believe whoever wrote that ad reading was like, <clears throat> when it's the afternoon and I'm tired and irritable and I send that email to Patrick that's really <laughs> short and <laughs> shitty and also nobody <laughs> takes into account that I haven't had lunch, I read for Nature Box. <laughs> like, it's just so like that. Uh, it fills me up. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets so weirdly personal there for a second. <laughs> I feel bad and hungry and mean. <laughs> All right. So apparently, Brian turns into the Hulk. <laughs> Hulk. Eat nom nom. This would be a wonderful time to try and rip your shirt open. <laughs> it wouldn't work, I don't think. Eat. No, I ain't got it. <laughs> if, if you'd had a button up, things would be different. That's ah. right. I, sh- I will come prepared next, next time. Next time, I'll just start pre cutting your shirts in the middle. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just slip. Sorry from the bottom. I just. <laughs> it'll look like I'm really, really strong when I'm not. Dragon Age. Dragon Age. Lay it on me. So. I always. Dragon Age was always one of those franchises that I wished I would get into. Mm-hmm. Like, I. So, you know, to clarify, you haven't played one or two then? No. Okay. No, I always meant to. In fact, I'm pretty sure I own both of them. <laughs> and it's so weird. Steam For some sale. reason, I thought you were a huge Dragon Age fan. No. Have you been I'm, so confused that over the last months I've been like, Dragon Age news, Ashley? And like every time there's something Dragon Age, I'm like, you're going to want to see this. And <laughs> like, this whole time I thought you were a big Dragon Age fan. <laughs> well, I'm theoretically a huge Dragon Age fan. Like, I bought the games, I meant to get into them. Uh, because it always seemed like I'm like I like my RPGs and Bioware's a great company. And when you take like, when you describe it as like the Mass Effect systems meets Skyrim, I'm like yeah yeah absolutely. So it's one of those series that is like made for me. And there's no there's absolutely no reason why I haven't played them. There's none. Um, but so I, this was my opportunity. I was like this is it. I'm getting in. I'm getting in. I'm gonna do it. This is fantastic. I got it. It's awesome. It's the character creator. Oh my god! I spent like I don't know. I spent hours in the character creator alone. That's always the the, the big holdup. If I get into a game and I'm like, oh, character creator, hold on to your butts. So do you make you, or do you make like an no, idealized? No, I never make me. Yeah. I never make me. I always make something different. Making you would be weird. Not yeah. you personally. I mean, making yourself would be weird. <laughs> making yeah. Ashley would yeah. suck. God, I don't want to be Ashley. No, making yourself, I feel like, is strange. Like I never mm. make. I very rarely make myself. Yeah, I always make something totally different. Yeah. Like uh, mm-hmm. I'll be like, I'm gonna make a dark elf with like red hair. She's yeah, gonna be awesome. And she's now like an Amidala stripe on her lip. Yeah. <laughs> I always make somebody who's like six feet tall. It's like your idealized like animu version of yourself. Yeah. And then I'm gonna put a helmet on it and never see my hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I started playing that. It's awesome. First of all, the character creator really is great. Um, but it's co- like it's cool. It's a. Uh, it's not. It's not open world like Skyrim in that you can't just be like, well, here I am in the east. I'm going to run to the west. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, it's definitely much more segmented. And the different areas sort of unlock as you go through it. So it's like you start off in an area and the air, they don't level either. Mm-hmm. So if you like you can go into an area and get your ass absolutely handed to you and be like, well, that didn't work. I'm going to not go there for a little while. <laughs> Whereas, you know, like in Skyrim, you're like, well, you know, I just need to approach this in a different way because yeah. obviously I can beat it. Yeah. Um, you know, I just I just need to figure it out. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's more of a, or a get traditional get it, RPG. Or get it stuck on a wall. Monster level <laughs> system. Yeah. 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 So it's it's great, though. And uh, you can have, there's like nine different people you can convince me in your party. I'm like, I'm like oh, I want to get all of them in my, yeah. like, I want to get, like, I need all of them on my side. And they're they're like, no, nah, if I don't like this, they will leave you. Oh, yeah. They will leave your ass if they don't like what you're doing. And I'm like, oh. Dragon Age has traditionally had a lot of very strong interpersonal reactions where if you're trying to make this person happy, that'll make the other people unhappy. There's always that. A, one character, too, that's like really just 180 degrees from what everybody else wants. And they're like, oh, you want to go do what that guy wants to do? Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, for no reason other than I hate yeah. completionists. Yeah. Fuck you. Yes. That's I felt that way about Walking Dead when you had to get the five people for four hundred days. If I didn't get all of them, I was like, failed. <laughs> yeah. So I like I think this is gonna be one of those games that's gonna be good to replay, except that it's also like a hundred hours long. Yeah, those are really a commitment, uh, especially if you want to follow up and like play it like a traditional game or a more RPG like game. You can easily go through that game or usually the previous games not doing side stuff and just not talking to people like you just fast forward through all the conversations it's much faster but it's still a long game and if you're going to do that why even bother playing right Right. exactly do you ever have a thing where if you go to replay a game like an rpg in a different way i'm like i was a i was a thief archer sneaky type in the last one i'm gonna be 
a battle mage this time, and it's going to be <laughs> awesome. And we, within a half hour, I'm back to like sneaking. And I'm like, where's a bow and arrow? I did the exact same thing in World of Warcraft. I was a rogue, an undead rogue, and then I was like, ooh, blood elves. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to be a warlock. But then my pet would be beating somebody, and I'd be like, me too, me too, me too. And my mom was like, what are you doing? Like, get back. You're, you're hunters, yeah. like get back behind your pet, and I'm like, this sucks. I want to go back to being a rogue. Why can't I disappear? Yeah, so like I, I always invariably fall into that. I'm like, I'm gonna do it this way this time. Nope, I'm not. I'm gonna sneak, and I'm gonna do my best to kill stuff before it knows I'm there. Cause I, I'm a coward. Sneaking is the best. <laughs> I want to say that you said, why would you even play a Dragon Age game if you're just gonna skip through all the cutscenes? Why would you play Had a Full Boyfriend if you're gonna skip through all the dialogue as well? Because the Let's dialogue was physically painful. It was making me dumber. <laughs> And Ryan, a, how huh? dare you? Do we follow this with a that's not possible? Oh. And then maybe and then maybe a little bit of a Z oh, snap. Yeah, 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 got it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't get it for a minute. I'm too dumb to get the joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh. At least I can be your brother in that. I was like, oh, that's a really good burn. And she's like, are we gonna have to pull up the burn? Everyone knows. Oh, not everybody knows it's coming. That's embarrassing for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean if you're I've been waiting for a good RPG on mm. the new consoles. You know, the, like there, I I've loved Sunset as far as like open world action, do whatever you want, sandbox, and there are a lot of like really good games out. But I've been waiting for an RPG. I thought Witcher was going to be that RPG. I actually thought Witcher Three was going to be it, and then it sort of got delayed into next year. Yeah, but that's okay because now there's Dragon Age, and they don't have to fight each other. Now they can be friends. So just lay it out for me. Is does it follow the same like? Uh, typical Bioware, like you're a character of indiscriminate or in, indistinct background with somehow specially chosen for yeah. this moment and this time? Yes. Do you actually know of. who you are? Because there's a lot of, this. you can divide Bioware games into like games where you start where you know who you are and games where you don't know who you are. Um, I don't think you know who you are in this one. I'm going to okay. be honest, the, the, the whole narrative is mm -hmm. incredibly confusing if like me, you haven't played the Dragon Age games before, so I'm like, I don't know what's going on, and I'm not sure how much of that is my character not knowing what's going on, and how much of it is just, I have no fucking idea what's there going on. There is a website, dragonkeep.com, which I think will, if you don't have save data, that's the the portal, I think, where you would have imported save data and Dragon choices from the yeah. first two, and it, uh, it may have, like, a short Yeah, so it's a weird thing where if you, so if you play the previous games, um, keeping in mind that you don't play the same character that you were in right. the previous games, but it, uh, you play in the same world so you can go to this site um, I think it's dragonagekeep.com it mm -hmm. imports it'll it'll look through your origin account that you've attached to your gamer tag or your PSN account or whatever um, or your origin account and uh, <laughs> it'll it'll pull the data in it'll populate a whole bunch of world choices like you know things that happened in the last one and then you can go through and you can either take that and import it dry to Dragon Age Inquisition or you can change it and do what you want you can say like no I want the world to be this way the cool thing is you can actually have a bunch of different worlds like you can be like I want to play in this kind of world this time and this kind of world this other time and so you can change huh. a bunch of the conditions can you change that while you're playing no not while you're so playing but like you can do okay. yeah you can do a new save and then play mm -hmm. through a a different world essentially okay um so that's really cool it's weird it's weird that you can't just import your oh like, your save like import that stuff directly and i do get it because this is a it's a new console generation and that gets a little bit tricky but um <clears throat> gta managed it so did minecraft actually gta i will say they Im you can import your multiplayer settings but you cannot or at least the single player saves don't carry over they don't no i always mm -hmm. thought they did mm -mm. or okay. unless well, I mean, maybe there's the an expert. option that uh, that i haven't seen but my save data for single player was completely that's started really over. weird because the uh, the exclusive content in the in the remastered version mm -hmm. you it has to be able to know that you've played at least through the prologue of the older versions Maybe it's only if you're upgrading stuff. from the old, yeah. like from past gen to current gen. Yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't know oh. how it went about determining that. Uh, and I don't know if I got the single player stuff or not. I think I did. Mm -hmm. I definitely copied over my multiplayer character. And it was weird. Like 90% of the multiplayer achievements just unlocked immediately. But some of them didn't. Wait, really? Huh. Yeah. So uh, you basically just like went bam, double achievements. Uh, for most of them. Like Gavin started getting ones. We did a Let's Play the other day. And Gavin started getting achievements he didn't even get. Like, he got a level 100 in multiplayer achievement that he... He's 49 or something. That's when it pays off to have that <sighs> shitty electric electricity aura. That's true. Yes. He does short things out in his favor sometimes. It's <laughs> just like, oh, yeah, you probably got that. Sure, why not? Meanwhile, I, Jeff and I, I think, didn't get the complete the introduction achievement for multiplayer, <laughs> uh, which I hope I can start a new multiplayer character and get it, because, I, I mean, I, I imported my current one. I don't... 
I don't know how to play that again. You didn't get the right. press start achievement? Pretty much, yeah. It's like, <laughs> enter the multiplayer world. Oh. Press start achievements are the worst. <laughs> like, it does well, seem best. like if you're going to have those like third-party accounts, tie-ins, that should be the benefit, uh -huh. is them being able to carry all your stuff across without you having to really do anything. What? Like, the Dragon Age Keep is awesome. It's really great. Um, and, I, you know, it's a nice way around it. But that's also something that only really core gamers are going to know about and and go out of their way to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of mainstream people are just going to miss out on that because they don't know about it. And they shouldn't have to. And they don't. I mean, I think you can play through that just I'm fine. a champion of the people. <laughs> 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 I mean, I guess it does help that, that you don't play the same characters. So it's not like you're starting back from square one as a mm -hmm. you know default shepherd or anything like that. Uh -huh. But it... It's nice to be like, oh, this happened in the world. I think from what I've seen, you start off, one of the first characters you run into is actually a character from a previous game, the dwarf with the, uh, the arrows. Yeah, he's actually from Dragon Age 2. Okay. Uh, so, see, again, there's uh, so much stuff. I need to start keeping just like the wiki open <laughs> next to me and be like, what is this shit? You, Somebody you, help me you here. You want to start like Ashley's journal and then my... Quest through Dragon Age, like, who did I meet today? Oh, I and then go and look up and find them, like, what are they from? What have they done <laughs> this before? This guy has a history. Well, as you said, your character doesn't know that, so uh, it doesn't really matter for your experience. I'm, in this look, I'm role playing, okay? Yeah, it's more, this you're is, being true yeah. to your character. I'm, I'm, I'm method. I'm method. That's right. Playing. So method. I know nothing. It's like I just fell out of a temporal warp or With something. No memory of who I was. <laughs> That, uh, I mean, I, it's been so long since Dragon Age and Dragon Age 2, I honestly don't remember most of what happened in that game. I think I remember making one guy king. I'm there was a civil war of some kind. I'm pretty sure I fought a dragon, too, Ooh. at some point. Yeah, I love that it's called age? Dragon Age, but and they show, like, two dragons in the trailer, like, ooh, dragon impressive, ha <laughs> ha. But it's almost like, there are politics. <laughs> you, you can decide if this village gets destroyed or not. And, well, that's, and, like, 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 the, like dragons are thing. very much, like, in the background. Fable did the same thing where it's like, are you shithead? Your world gets dark. Are you a good person? <laughs> Lots of sunshine. Like, it just made everything look different. I don't know. I had a weird thing when I was playing black and white years and years and years ago, but it's Lionhead, so it, um, I think it's sort of built on that same technology where um, I would be just like a total asshole god, but mm -hmm. my giant creature, he was good because he thought everything he was doing was good. <laughs> That's so like, right. You think you're doing it. That's right. I love how you can see like the real psychopath in people when they play. <laughs> you're like the person that drowns Sims it. in pools, aren't you? Yeah, it takes out the ladder. <laughs> Only when they add the pools, which they have done. They've thankfully. added the pool, yeah, right? Which is nice. Free update, too. I guess they were like, fine, you can have your goddamn uh, pools. All right, here's your murder pit. Fine, yeah, exactly. Go. We're sick of you killing our Sims. <laughs> They're like, all right, don't be creative about your murders. <laughs> <laughs> Just go back to the back old in my day, same pool. Back in my day, they used to put Sims in a room with no toilet, no door, and just let them and put then light themselves in there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I had a memories. friend in, uh, in college who would play Sims and she would get so into her Sims and like three Sims in a row were lesbians who set themselves on fire. <laughs> like she couldn't figure out, like what, am I, what choices do I keep making to make lesbians like, that what, kill themselves what on have, fire? What have I done to my life? <laughs> <laughs> I remember coming to her house one day and being like, tink, 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 and it like took a little while and finally she like runs downstairs, opens the door and sprints back upstairs and I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, my Sims on fire! <laughs> I'm losing another Sim! <laughs> so is that a game where you start to think like consider your life choices like what am I, I just love it so what am I doing much. I played Sims I think it was the Sims 2 super hardcore for about a week like uh -huh. it was all I did for a week and then I was like what am I doing here I, like I, I had I'm very happy that I had that revelation as early as I did that you know I only lost a week to it uh -huh. and then I was like uh I'm okay nope I'm out and I like I haven't actually played Sims since ever I've been, you know, had no problem whatsoever throughout my life separating, you know, reality and fiction and video games and all that stuff. The one thing that freaked me about The Sims is I played it for a little while. I don't even know how long, but I got to where I was thinking in real life, if I would feel hungry, I'd be like, oh, my hunger bar's low. <laughs> and that was the moment where I realized, I have to stop playing this game. Aww. It's doing bad things to me. Like, oh, I need to go study. My study bar's low. Oh, oh my bathroom bar's getting really high. No, 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 I can't live like this. The like, thing, that is unacceptable. The things that get me are, uh, whenever I play a game a lot, I dream. In that mm -hmm. game, like, when I play World of Warcraft, I used to have every dream was in World of Warcraft. So, like, <laughs> it was awesome. Um, but also, I sometimes, if I'm playing a game or if, like, I read a book, 
I'll start thinking like in the same cadence as the main character. Do you ever mm-hmm. do something? I do like that, that too, and I start using weird language. <laughs> <laughs> like if I'm reading, I because I'm a fantasy nut, and so I'll be like reading these books, and then I'll be like, "Oh, you have, have you?" And so, like, just suddenly my language will start to get super flowery. Yeah. And I'll, like, have to stop myself from using, like, a hast every now and again. And be like, no, that is not a thing. Your speaking becomes rich with foreign prose. Yeah. But then I also get, I also get an internal monologue, like, narrating everything that's going on that I'm doing. And then I'm like, yes, she smiled cheekily. <laughs> Read a lot of noir Nailed books. Like, it. It, was a, it was a dark, stormy day when I came into the office. Ashley's the door a, was jammed. A gumshoe, like but she doesn't know it. <laughs> yeah, I went through. I uh, went through the huge phase recently where I read the. Um, uh, they're basically they're they're the Harry Dresden the Dresden yeah, Files. Yeah, uh-huh, the Dresden Files. And so I read all. I love there's those like books. Fifteen of them, and I read yeah. all of them in the space of about a month. Uh huh. And so, like, I was reading like I like I would get upset with myself if I went like a day and didn't finish one. So, like, this was all I was doing, and I full-on went gumshoe. <laughs> <laughs> doom, I would love to doom, go back and, like, read the news reads I wrote uh-huh. during that time and see how much of Dresden snuck in. Did you start getting detective-like? Do you lace it with occult terms? I, I, was, I was, like, sleuthing. <laughs> and I was being like, I'm a, I, like, I'm a careless, I should get a long coat. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh... We, they did a recap recently over here, I, I, not to get too far away, but they did a recap recently where they argued whether or not people would know the word sleuthing. What? Or uh, maybe it was a Ten Little Rooster Seas. That's what it was. Well, we just was had like, a Ten Little Rooster Things. And someone was like, people don't know what that is. And I'm like, How do, who doesn't know what a sleuth is? We did it. What? What's most to disturbing fair, to me? To be fair, you say did, a lot, it's a weird word. Yeah, it's sleuthing. Yeah, it's true. It doesn't come up that often. But we did a, there was an homage to... Uh, Empire Strikes Back, where the uh, face blows off and then you see my head inside the, the creeper head. And, like, there were people explaining what that was in the in the comments. That makes me so sad. I know. I know it's an old movie. I know. Like, it's almost before my time. But uh, it's a cultural icon. It, right? Or they just not yeah. remember? Anyway. Okay. Not to not to pull us too far back into the game. We've lost a video anyway. game thread a while ago. Yeah. Uh, Gus is somewhere We're rolling over. We're almost out of time, his, too. But he's, he's rolling over grave. in Australia. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing, combat-free MMO. A little what, what, what? There's a combat-free MMO. You brought it up. Warface? Wander. A wander, yes, 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 oh, yes. Oh, that was uh, premiered at E3. And it was like, come be a cave person. I'm you start off as a walking tree. Yeah, it's crazy. They like swim. It. They swim under a, a lake at one point, and there's like a giant just hanging out under the lake. It's so, so weird. I'm really curious what the what do you do? It, oh, wait, am I fun. thinking? I don't know. Do you just like make trailers? Wow, well, you make it looks awesome. Really pretty tale. You know what trailer? it's like? That oh, it's it actually reminds me a lot of uh, of No Man's Sky. Yeah. It does have a very similar kind of... Where it's, uh, it's going to be really cool. It's about exploration. You go do all this stuff. And I'm like, right, so what's the game? Yeah, what, what do you do day after day in that? Like, right. once you've wandered... What is, well, yeah, what, is, what does the average gameplay session look like? Or is it... I mean, surely it's not an infinite world. Why would that be an MMO either? Like, what's the... What, what do I need to interact with you for? Um, so you can dance? That's what you do in an MMO, right? You just dance That is each what other? dancing is about. Uh, that's pretty much the only modern expression of dancing that is acceptable. Is you have to have MMOs. that face and do it, too. Uh, Man, now I'm thinking maybe I'm thinking of a different game than what we just showed. Really? There's another MMO? It's not an MMO. Is it an MMO? You know what? I said, is it an MMO? So maybe on the like having a good feeling, like really like positive about it. I hope it'll be something like Journey, Mm -hmm. where the it's an MMO. Like I mean, that is the multiplayer in that you just randomly meet people that you can't even really communicate with aside from the like little beeps. Oh, but it's so but, great. But when you, you do. like I form these super emotional attachments yeah. to people and then I lose them in the desert and I go, <gasps> <sighs> Well, I my my journey continues on, but I'll always remember you. <laughs> I would like, start to finish with a person in journey and I took a photo of their gamer tag. Whatever because it tells you at the end who it was since we stay together and I was like, I'll never forget you. <laughs> like I was so I was, I was what's so like, what's a gamer tag? I have the photo, so I tweeted so you it at uh-huh. them. No, I tweeted it at the time and was like, whoever this is, if you're out there, I miss you. <laughs> and Twitter will always remember your name. I'll, I'll have lost it long since, but Twitter yes. will hold on you to that memory for me. You live in annals of history. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it, like, I like the idea of uh, basically just like a giant world that mm-hmm. you just go, like, let's go to go in a world. I'm worried it's just going to come down to just collection quests, though. Like, ah, give me 20 acorns. 
Yeah, I mean, if I you're not, love those. If I'm you're not the worst in- MMO type person. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, 28 cards, 28 cards, 28 cards. You, have you played Sunset Overdrive yet? I haven't. You love it. It's got, what, 750 collectibles? Yes, it oh, does. Yes. Yeah. I love like, all, like, like all kinds of different kinds. A lot of those are fun to get, though, because it's all they just like fun. movement based. Yeah. But uh, I, got, like, I got really good at traversal, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Is it like uh, the Chim Pokemon and Stick of Truth? Chim Pokemon. I didn't play Chim Oh, really? Anytime I see one, I'd be like, ah, I have to get. There's one you can't get, like, right off the that you just see it and then come back to it and I was it drove me nuts yep all right well that would be an episode of the patch Damn I think it, I was trying to scroll through our videos no uh, David Bowie's fully exposed Shit. Uh, that's a different website but that's, uh, right. that's, that's gonna be a future game happy Thanksgiving yeah. everyone uh, yes. join us next Monday for another RT podcast and next Wednesday for a patch and then screenplays in there somewhere too on Tuesdays Tuesdays thanks everybody bye happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving bye